Good morning and welcome to worship today at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Walkersville, Maryland. We are glad you're here with us in person and online. A couple of announcements. Uh, we had a group of 10 meet for Lager for Lent this past Friday, so that was awesome. We had great discussion, but they decided that St. Patty's Day was going to be more important on Friday, so we're not going to meet this coming Friday. <laughs> uh, we'll be back at Glory Days on the 24th, so we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, Easter lilies are available so to, for pur purchase so that we can adorn the church for Easter Sunday. They're $10 each. There's a sign-up sheet in the hall, or you can do it online, or you can call Joanne, or you can tell me, and we'll make it happen. So let's, let's make that happen. Uh, the Reverend Annabelle Markey will be at uh, Marlou Ridge on March 21st to share her journey on the Camino de Santiago. So if you're interested in that, see me and I'll get you the information so that we can join at Marlou Ridge and, and listen to that journey. It's something that I've thought about as well as the Appalachian Trail, but you know, I gotta come here. Um, on March 24th, we'll have our blood drive from 10 to four. So sign up and come and save a life. We're looking for one more person to join the joint council uh, between Bethel and St. Paul's to work on the covenant and to just be that, that body that kind of looks out for each church. So if you think that you could be a part of that, please let me know because we'd like to get started to work on the covenant and, and get the ball rolling. So let me know, or Trish know. And... I was told Kate will be doing quilt knotting this Saturday at what time? Nine, Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock in the parish hall. So if you're interested in helping out, see Kate and she'll get you squared away. Okay? Let's quiet our hearts for worship.
Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out, pour out your, your mercy, mercy over us. us. Our, Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus, as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ. The wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with you. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Shut 
God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading for the third Sunday of Lent comes from the 17th chapter of Exodus, verses 1 through 7. In the introduction, because the thirsty Israelites quarreled with Moses and put God to the test, Moses cried out in desperation to God. God commanded Moses to strike the rock to provide water for the people. The doubt-filled question, is the Lord among us or not? received a very positive answer. The first reading. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses said, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? but the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders. 
He called the plate Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Here ends the first reading, the word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 95, read responsibly by the half verse. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to the Lord with songs. For you, Lord, are a great God. And, and a great, great ruler above, above all gods. gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, and you made it. And your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as, as on, on that, that day, day at Massa in, in the, the desert. desert. There your ancestors tested me. They, they put me to the test, test though they, they had seen my works. Forty years I loathed that generation, saying, The heart of this people goes astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore in my anger. They shall never come to my rest. The second reading for today comes from the fifth chapter of Romans, verses 1 through 11. Introduction. Though we often hear that God helps those who help themselves, here Paul tells us that through Jesus' death, God helps utterly helpless sinners. Since we who had been enemies and reconciled to God in the cross, we now live in hope for our final salvation. The second reading. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access in this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we boast through our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, Character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more, surely then, now that we have been justified in his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, Will we, will we be saved by his life? But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Here ends the second reading. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. I invite you to be seated. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. 
Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? And Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you the living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and flocks who drank from it? And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered, I have no husband. And Jesus said, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you say is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is with the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here where the true worshipers will Worship the Father in truth and spirit, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him anything to eat. And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do, not, do you not say, four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages, wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the sayings hold true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. And many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I had ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you have said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, 
And we know that this is truly the Savior of the world, the Gospel of our Lord. Grace be unto you in peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It was about three years ago when we were witnessing COVID taking a toll on the health and welfare of the world. COVID then took its toll on our community as we were required to suspend in-person worship and rely on the internet to relay our messages of hope to our congregation. And you've often heard me say that it's not the building, it's the community who gathers together to worship and shares the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus affirms this for us today in our gospel, where his conversation with the Samaritan woman is somewhat centered on where exactly someone should worship. The woman asserts that her place was on Mount Gerizim and that the Jews were in the temple of Jerusalem. And Jesus kind of turns this back on her when he says that neither place is where worship will take place, but that God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Jesus is giving this woman the knowledge the spirit is not confined to a place or a certain piece of geography. The spirit is able to go as does the wind to be wherever God wants. And as with the wind, we cannot see the Spirit, though in our hearts and through faith, we know God is with us. And I will say, though, that I've had some issue reconciling this to myself as we are recovering from COVID. As Jesus mentioned, and as have I, the building is not what confines the Spirit, nor does it necessarily define our worship but being with others is what builds our fellowship and strength in worship. The steps we took to ensure that we were not shut down and were able to continue to share the good news with our congregation certainly changed the way we did church. And they opened up new avenues to share with those who were seeking the gospel. All in all, our worship experience has changed our outreach in our community making worship more accessible to those who are not being able to be present for whatever reason. Yet I think it's important for us to remember how Jesus reached the Samaritan woman and ultimately the people who were living in the town below the well. Jesus shared personal fellowship and conversation with the woman who was so moved she left her water jar and went back to town to tell everybody about finding the Messiah. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This personal interaction was so strong that a, a Jew was asked to abide or dwell with the Samaritans and they had in-person conversation that was so powerful Jesus was able to share God with a group different from himself. A group that typically did not associate with Jews. Imagine being able to have that type of conversation now in the current climate of our society. I would, as I have said before, firmly state that we would be able to move forward effectively if only we took the time to listen and to hear. And that's why I decided to resurrect the Lager for Lent Fellowship as it gives opportunity to talk outside of the church and hear differing opinions from people in a setting that isn't church. We can do church anywhere, as we attested to during the pandemic, 
we were online, we were outside on the lawn, we were in the park, and I would positively say we were doing it as best as could be expected. I believe we did church well when we restarted the Strawberry Festival in a new fashion which allowed a variety of folks to minister to our community instead of being focused on the tasks that needed to be done. We were able to meet our community outside of the doors of the church and weren't constrained to the notion someone had to come inside, though they were invited and many did. I would say for me that not being inside the four walls is an okay thing, yet I would also say having fellowship with each other is paramount. Doing things differently to meet people where they are is exactly what Belinda started with the thrift shop, the soup kitchen, Victoria Park, and probably a whole host of other things that I don't even know about. Experience God in whatever place we find ourselves is exactly what we are called to do as disciples of Christ. The Samaritan woman experienced God at the well. A God who was able to put away any sense of entitlement to cross racial and gender barriers and meet her where she was. Seeking. Seeking the one who she knew was coming. Her Messiah. Now last week we heard from Nicodemus who was coming to Jesus in the dark, unaware of the true nature of the, this person in his presence. And Nicodemus was still not a believer in this first encounter with Jesus and goes away empty, though things were churning inside of him. Today we have Jesus sitting at the well at noon, the height of the day where he he is met by a Samaritan woman with whom Jews would not consort and especially would not have conversation with a man in that time and place. Jesus opens an opportunity for this woman to share her faith, and she's empowered to have the theological discussion without any hesitation. She affirms for Jesus her faith whereby Jesus reveals his true self to this woman and provides her with all she is seeking. Though they were from different backgrounds, they were able to have a respectful and loving conversation where she is filled with the living water and embarks on her own journey as a disciple of Christ. Think about this. A woman who is living on the fringes of her society becomes maybe, and already is, a disciple who brings a whole town to Jesus. All of this from just a cordial conversation with a stranger she did not know. Although sensing who he might be, she is given the gift of God in person. She doesn't hesitate as she filled with the Spirit. She leaves her jar and is now filled with new water and hurries to let everyone else know about the good news. How powerful is that testimony? Revealing the news to her town of what she has found and that everyone should come and see. And they do. We hear the words of Jesus every week and for many of us we hear those words every day. A simple conversation with someone different from us may lead to a whole town believing. When we had a Solutions Sunday meeting, the most common thread was that, there, that we were not engaged with each other as we had used to be. There are so many opportunities for us to share conversation and be together. All we need to do is take those moments and make them a reality. It might be as easy as seeing someone in a store, a restaurant, a doctor's office. And for me, it has worked out in the phlebotomist's office where each time I'm there, the person drawing my blood and I have discussion about how our faith-filled lives are moving forward. The woman recognized her need for the living water Jesus was offering. 
She recognized having conversation with someone different from her was not a terrible thing. And she understood that what she was seeking, this man had to offer. The woman at the well was so bold, she asked Jesus for the living water. A boldness we should embrace and take on ourselves. Yet, if God knows all we need as evidenced in Jesus' knowledge of this woman, why should we ask for it? And she asked because Jesus offered. She was moved by the words spoken to her. And by asking, she recognized her need and the origin of her nourishment. And in receiving this gift, she offered praise and thanksgiving by sharing her good fortune with her whole community. A simple conversation with a stranger led to Jesus being welcomed into a community on the edge of the margins. A simple conversation led to a gift by God and the most unexpected circumstance being shared and turning conventional behavior and custom on its head. Are you bold enough to have a conversation with someone about the living water, a Messiah, good news, or even about Jesus? Our gospel for today highlights for us the reception of a gift because someone came out of their circumstance, had an exchange with a stranger, and became a more empowered disciple of Christ. I invite you to meet someone at the well and give them the gift you know is good. Empower them to witness as you do and watch the water flow. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for your church. Bless partnerships with other Christians and, uh, and interreligious dialogue. Guide the daily work of denominational and congregational leaders. Strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel that all experience your life-giving love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the universe. All creation teems with life from the depths of the earth and seas to the skies above. <coughs> Fill us with awe and reverence for the diversity and preservation of life. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be present with all who are lonely and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or other sickness, especially Lillian, Robert, Susan, Paul, Pat, Jonathan, Bruce, Bob, Gary, Michael, Kim, Roxanne B, Mike, Charlie, those on our prayer list and those whom we name in our hearts are out loud. Give them your living water always. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially those preparing for baptism. Nurture their faith and pour your love into their hearts. Inspire our community by their testimony to God's grace in their lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for the lives of all your saints. Their hope in you sustained lives of faith and service. Encourage us with the hope they shared in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We are thankful for the gifts that you share with this congregation that sustain our ministries, and we ask you to continue to do so.
forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world, signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join our unending hymn. great love you sent to us Jesus your son who reached out to heal the sick and suffering who preached the good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Gather into one with the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
All are welcome at Christ's table. Come as you are. The feast is prepared. The table is set. Come and eat.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our heart open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the giver of life, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks be to God.